You are listening to the To and Out CFL Podcast, a proud member of the Canadian Football Podcast Network. Grab some poutine and a double-double. It's time for the To and Out CFL Podcast. He's got it! Oh, baby! Every week, Travis Cura. That's yeah. great company, which is a different person. And Brazilian Tide. Hunters are people, too. Talk fantasy football, bring you the latest in CFL news, and sprinkle in a little bit of nonsense. Oh, nearly intercepted it ends! And it's over! Ready, set, hunt! And we are a part of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. It's Travis Curra, it's Sheldon Jones, it's playoff time. I almost did the, you know, slick in the hair back. I almost put the bow tie on under my beard, but not quite there. Hey, what you, is that a Jimi Hendrix shirt? What is that? No, it's Tupac. Oh, Tupac. Hey, that's pretty cool, too. <laughs> you. Both are pretty awesome. This episode of Two and Out is brought to you by Taproot Spotlight, a service that helps businesses and organizations pay attention to the people they serve. Taproot tells you the news about the people and companies that are important to you. You can use that information internally to keep everyone on the same page or share it with the world in your newsletter, on your website, and on your social media channels. Paying attention pays dividends. You can find out more at taprootpublishing.ca slash spotlight. It's taprootpublishing.ca slash spotlight. Not only is it semi-final playoff weekend in the CFL, it has been announcement galore. So we have to go through this stuff. And it starts on a bizarre note. Uh, another one of those instances where <laughs> you can only shake your head. We, we get lists, the all-star lists, on Wednesday afternoon from the Canadian Football League. And it doesn't take long for people to look at these lists and say, what's going on here? Andrew Harris is on the list. And, hey, Andrew Harris is an all-time great, but he only played eight games this year. His uh, yards per carry was less than five yards in the games he was in. He didn't score a touchdown. <laughs> there were a lot of bizarre things on that list and we know that fans were voting so instantly I think the blame went to the fan vote but coaches players I believe or coaches at least are able to put a vote in for the all-stars media as well and it's all this complicated f formula probably on some fancy spreadsheet Maybe it wasn't done right, but either way, the wrong list was sent out. The league was forced to issue an apology and then put out the proper list. So it, there was about 20 players that thought they were all-stars, and then 10 minutes later were not all-stars. What a bizarre situation this has been. And, man, it's – there's a lot of people that are saying it's just thing after thing after thing with the CFL this year. It's just not being able to get out of their way. Yeah. Um, I feel for all those players. Like, 20 no of those guys kidding. would have gotten – like, they lost money, right? Because probably – a lot of them probably have an all-star clause in their contract. And it's – it's got to be really frustrating for that to happen. And still, there's some people on that list that do not deserve to be an all-star. Still, uh, you think? Yeah. I Well, Boris Bidet, how is he an all-star? Like, Well, he's Boris, not anymore. Um, oh, I thought, um, I thought he was still on the list. The okay, updated list now has uh, okay. Seth Small from Hamilton. Okay. So they, that's by one that. of the ones that <laughs> okay. was fixed. Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, like, how's Toronto? Yeah, they had 17, I think, in the initial I think list. the whole Argonauts team was <laughs> was an all-star. <laughs> yeah, like, you feel for, like, people like Keon Schaefer-Baker, who, you know, they don't get it, and then Moncrief gets it when a linebacker from Saskatchewan, you'd think it'd be Sankey, but I guess it's different with the coverage linebacker and because Moncrief does – He's a little better in the coverage He was there, getting but... some tough assignments this year, that's for sure. Yeah, I just – I think they I – hope, I hope that they learn the lesson through this and maybe next year they can update the process, maybe have a fan's choice all-star and then an official all-star that 
would be tied into the incentives in the contracts or something like that, just because you hate to see some players. Like, I, I saw Aaron Grimes tweeted out that he was, and I don't know if he was on the list initially, but he was pretty upset about the bonus money that players were losing out on this. And kind of making it seem like it's not like it's all a game and it's hard to argue that with what is happening. Yeah, I don't know what the formula is or where the fan percentage lies, but and if that really was the problem, but yeah, no Calgary offensive linemen were on the original list. They they lead the league in rushing. They've given up what sixty less sacks than the Riders. <laughs> like, yeah, like eighteen sacks total. Like. <laughs> A remarkable yeah. season from them. So the updated list did have three Stampeder offensive linemen on the list. You could go through the list. It, it's it's quite long, obviously, because there's uh, lots of positions and two divisions and things like that. But just a, a crazy season. We still don't have the Grey Cup halftime announcement. Now this show will be released on the Friday. The announcement's going to come out after the show, so maybe we could make some guesses and then edit it later. No, I'm not going to edit it later, but the uh, halftime performer of the Grey Cup is Weird Al Yankovic. Is Jan Arden. Is... <laughs> Who could it be? But now they've got to beat the halftime performer that the BC Lions have for the West semifinal, which I think is pretty cool. We're going to get to that right away. And speaking of the BC Lions, they will be hosting the 111th Grey Cup in 2024. I think this is validation for the job that Amar Doman has been doing on the West Coast, uh, growing that Lions brand throughout British Columbia. And look, it hasn't been there since 2014 and a game that I remember well I remember Brandon Banks returning that touchdown only for that flag to come out in the Calgary Stampeders to clinch that great cup in 2014 congratulations to the Lions to that and yeah it's well deserved for the job that Mr. Dolman's doing in Vancouver absolutely um I'm excited for it. Hopefully, we'll be able to go there. Uh, my brother-in-law lives in, Cal or in uh, Vancouver, so nice. hopefully free place to stay. Um, we were going to go last time in 2014, but it just didn't work out. Um, yeah, I, I think they've, they're showing that they're getting this playoff game ready and they're announcing more stuff than the right. Like, I'm wondering if they're going to announce the halftime for next year's Grey Cup before this, <laughs> this year's Grey Cup. Like... <laughs> It's been a bizarre year. Hey, speaking of Regina, there was some news there too. Uh, announced on Tuesday that Jason Moss has been relieved of his duties, as well as run game coordinator and offensive line coach Steven Sorrells and receivers coach Travis Moore as well. So it's going to be a new offensive coaching staff in Regina in 2023. But Craig Dickinson returning next year Jeremy O'Day returning next year both of those guys have their contracts expiring at the end of 2023 so now those guys are they're linked together uh yeah. O'Day is gonna live and die by Dickinson and after this season I have to assume Sheldon that the ice is probably thin oh uh I'm sure it's very very thin um you know, I've, I've, I was wanting a complete house cleaning. Uh, I just, it's hard to do that now with the, with the coach's cap and how that's set up. So, again, like I said, last offseason, I hope that they figure that out this offseason too. Um, but I guess now it's time to see if, if Dickinson has learned anything because he, he wasn't, he had some issues in that first year that he was there, but still led them to first place in the West. So, I guess it's time to look in and see, like, it's time to see if, like, it was his decision to pull Cody later or not, or not, so, not earlier. Like, it's time, I guess, maybe for him to get his hands on this team. And I guess it depends on who they can find to be an offensive coordinator. Uh, but if they start slow next year, I would be surprised to see them both let go by Labor Day if it's if they're, you know, two and seven or something to start the year, like. I don't 
It's kind of funny. We'll see what the schedule is because this past season got off to a nice start for them. And that uh, if it gets off to the nice start for them again next year, maybe that uh, – that buys them you know, a few more weeks. Yeah. I don't know. But the Riders, they looks like they're going to be in the market for a new quarterback. They're going to be in the market for a new offensive uh, line or maybe a few offensive linemen anyway. Oh, more than a few. <laughs> maybe they're going to want to get an OC uh, that will be able to handpick a quarterback. And I know a lot of Rider fans – <laughs> they, they think Paul Lapolis would look good back in green and white, but let's remember he handpicked Matt Nichols uh, over uh, Nick Arbuckle a few years ago. So, <laughs> yeah. and he's also he he's got he's getting paid. Is it two more years or one more year that he's getting? Paid oh yeah, for? sit on the panel and get paid. That's exactly. What I do. You can double yeah, double dip on the panel, and then you wait for the next opportunity if you want to go back. I don't know if he's going to get another opportunity as a coach though. I'm not sure about that, but um, yeah, I guess it, there's three main options I can think of. He's one of them. Kahari Jones would be the other one. Mark Mueller, the other one. It's kind of the dark horse, I think, but with rumors of Huffnagel possibly retiring at the end of the year, what happens in Calgary? Very interesting rumor that kind of surfaced this week. He's now in his 70s, been with the Calgary Stampeders for a long time, and maybe Dickinson is going to do dual. Maybe Dickinson, Dave, just steps into the head office role, and Mark Killam goes to the sidelines, and that would just continue that continuity and that pipeline that they've set up in Calgary for years to come nothing would surprise me but i think if there's one team that's set up for their gm to ride off to into the sunset it probably is the calgary stampeders but the job yeah. he has done in calgary over the past decade and a half it uh, has a lot of teams envious and a lot of fan bases envious of the success they've been have able to have in calgary and yeah they would have liked to have seen more obvious uh, playoff success, not to rub it in a little bit, but there has been a Take lot of winning, winning in Calgary uh, over the yeah. past, or during Huffnagel's tenure anyway. Now, I guess on-field news, the Edmonton Elks have extended linebacker Adam Konar, a good Canadian in the linebacking core there. He was second on the team in tackles this season with 57, and he played all 18 games. So look at that new two-year contract for Adam Konar. As far as the Grey Cup coming up in a few weeks, we do know that Valley will be uh, headlining the kickoff show. Uh, they're a Ooh. Juno Award-nominated quartet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they'll be kicking off the game in the stands. Now, what kind of weather are you getting in Regina right now? Because in my neck of the woods, if I look out the window, I'm walking in a winter wonderland, man. I was, It was looking like we were going to have a decent weather for the Grey Cup, but right now it looks like it could be minus 15 in a blizzard. Yeah, well, the snow is pretty much, we got snow like a week and a half ago. Uh, like We got quite a big dump, but it's pretty much all gone now. Um, and it's like two degrees out there right now, so it's not terrible. Yeah, it's not but bad. Yeah, we'll just have to see if it can hold for a couple of weeks, and hopefully we don't get too much snow by then. Right now, outside of the uh, two and out studio, minus eight, uh, about a foot of snow on the ground, uh, getting down to minus 20 on Monday night, and that's... Only about a week and a half out for the Grey Cup, so we'll see if that system moves your way. Well, <laughs> hopefully it stays like more nature. more north, right? Because like our buddies in Lloyd, they got like all that stuff, yeah. and then it Saskatoon. <laughs> so it like we caught like a little bit of rain yesterday or the day before, but hopefully we can the southern Regina tropical area can be. <laughs> Not like last last time Grey Cup was here. Other than Ooh. the game, it was like minus forty five the whole week. So oh we boy, that again. Yeah, that was something else. The Eastern One. semifinal, man. We got the Montreal Alouettes home to the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Three meetings this year. The home team won all three the owls winning two and the tight cats winning one but if you look at just the playoff success 
over the last little while. Since the Owls have come back to the CFL, the Ticats and the Alouettes have met eight times in the playoffs. The Alouettes won one of those games. The Owls have won seven of their last ten games. The Ticats, they had to win, and they had to get hot to get into the playoffs. They're on a four-game winning streak right now. This is quite the intriguing matchup we have coming up in Montreal on Sunday. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how we were all riding off the East at the beginning of the season, or the first third of the season, and at the end of the season, they started doing what they needed to do. Um uh, honestly, I don't know what's going to happen in this game. I, either team could easily win. So it's it's like a coin flip game for me. I, I don't even know. We've seen in the past where Trevor Harris will, and I don't want to knock the guy, but get into the between the 20s? Well, <laughs> he get into the Grey Cup and there's a little bit of struggling in there. But mm. we've seen him in the semifinal and the final just light it up. Yeah. And just looking like a destroyer. So are we going to see that this Sunday? Because we know that the Owls are going to be in tough to get that running game going. And the, the Ticats have the number one rushing defense. They've given up just under 1,500 yards on the season. I guess to put that into perspective, the, the Stamps have rushed for 2,400 yards on the season. So the Ticats have a good running uh, defense. Those defensive tackles are going to make things tough. The linebacker is going to make – they have talent on the defense. There's oh, yeah. no doubting that. But I think early in the season – it was the turnovers on offense. Yeah. And the Ticats have the worst turnover ratio in the CFL, and they made it into the playoffs. Minus 22 on the season, which is rough. That is a yeah. rough ratio. So are the Owls going to be able to knock that rust off of William Standback? Since Standback came back, we haven't been able to see – a big dominant game from him yet. Um, but once in a while, they're able to do a pitch or a short pass to Walter Fletcher, and we've seen him run off some big gains here and there. It's going to be an interesting battle to see if they can get the running backs going for that Montreal offense. Well, yeah, that's playoff football 101, right? You you got to ground them, rerun the ball. Um, Dylan Wynn, I don't think, is playing. so uh, So at least... For Montreal's sake, uh, they don't have to deal with him. Um, but, yeah, uh, I they kind of have a two-headed offense. Like, if they have Antwi and they have, well, three, I guess, with Fletcher, too. Like, it's it's yeah. kind of like a Calgary situation, but not quite as, I guess, great. But uh, I, I see Standuck having a big game. I, I do. Uh, I don't know why. Um, it's just a feeling I got, but I think... I think he's going to get. A, he's going to make it his way to the outside and break some tackles. Stay away from running on the inside, um, but we'll see what happens. On the on the flip side, I, I still don't think that the Tie Cats offense is settled. Like Don Jackson's oh. been practicing in full this week. He's he's got the injury bug a little bit. We saw we saw Wes Hills ended up being a, a great surprise or addition to the offense later in the season the guy just looked like a, a dominator for for the cats so let's see what the tie cats are going to do with their running attack and let's see what they're going to do with their quarterbacks now it, it appears that dane evans is beginning all the reps orlando steinauer saying that he's got the tape on his hand but he's able to make the throws we saw in the last game of the season him shaking that hand in the Ottawa game. Steinauer also saying that not to be surprised if we see Matt Schiltz come to the game <laughs> as well. It, it does not seem like they have really been able to establish any real sort of consistency. Yeah, they've been able to win the last four games, but 
I think that quarterback situation, ooh, they it has to be solid, and they don't have time to figure it out. That's not an ideal situation going into the playoffs. No, um, but it might also be a little bit of gamesmanship that they're just trying to make uh, Montreal prepare for both of them. But probably, um, uh, yeah, like. I think Schultz is a really good like change of pace backup. Like he can run, but he he can also throw. So yeah, um, it's I I on it. I see if if Dane Dane will probably start, but if he falters, I it, I would not surprise me if he gets pulled like quickly to see what Schultz can do because like you said, it's playoffs. They can't wait till the th- halfway through the third quarter or start of the fourth to try to get a spark. To. Uh, <laughs> to uh to try to win that game because you know it's it's all or nothing right two of the most targeted receivers in the canadian football league are in this game tim white led the cfl with 145 targets he had 94 catches 1265 yards and eight touchdowns gino lewis one less target 91 (laughs) catches 1303 yards 10 touchdowns, it goes without saying, those two receivers are focal points of their respective offenses. I think that the Ticats, oh, I, I don't think you could stop Geno, but I think that their, their defense probably has a better chance to knock Harris off of his rhythm and to limit Geno Lewis than the other way around. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the the Alouette defense, they they can make plays. They can turn the ball over. Their turnover ratio is about even. Uh, they're plus one, but that is probably a testament to, to, to Trevor Harris, their quarterback. And, and a lot of people, I think, especially this season, I think after the run with Edmonton, kind of look at Harris as kind of like your average guy, maybe a game manager guy. But still, (laughs) if there's a quarterback right now that you need one drive, you need a game-winning field goal drive. (laughs) Yeah, if if you need a field goal, he's your man. Harris might be that guy. At the end of the game, he he can be clutch and he can make those, those throws. And Geno Lewis, if he's got a little opening, he's going to make defenses pay. Now, how do the Ticats get to Harris and uh, knock him off his rhythm early in the game? That'll be big. But how do the Owls get to Dane Evans and rattle him, which I think he's a little more rattleable. I just made up a word (laughs) than, than Harris is, that's for sure. Look, I, again, I, I, all, I think it's going to be a fascinating good. game, man. Yeah, like, again, everything that we say, it's like you bring up one good point, and it's like, but on the flip side, there's this. So, like, it's – I hope it's a great game. I hope it doesn't turn out to be, like, a 13-10 to 10 defensive struggle, but sometimes that just happens in playoffs. But this – yeah, they're, they're very evenly matched, other than the turnovers. That's, like, the one glaring – the turnovers and the – home and away record like that's an interesting point the Ticats two and seven on the road yeah so very interesting that's not (laughs) and they got that horn guy they're gonna have to deal with so that that's something too (laughs) and I was gonna say you you thought that the horns were bad during the regular season I love the horns now I'm on I'm team horn (laughs) they're gonna be cranked up in the playoffs (laughs) <laughs> oh, they should give them out to every fan. Like, <laughs> go. <laughs> I want to. I want to look at this. Ticat road wins. One came against Ottawa, October 29th. Oh, they beat Calgary, October fourteenth. Oh. <laughs> so they beat Ottawa and Calgary. That's uh, that's an interesting mix. You're right. These teams are evenly. <laughs> match it's the big glaring things are Hamilton's turnover ratio but their rushing defense 
the best on mm. one, yeah. worst yeah. on the other. Yeah. Can the yeah. Cats limit their own turnovers? That will probably be a big one here. Uh, the over-under in the game, 48 and a half. And the Alouettes, only three-point favorites. Going to be an interesting one. I haven't seen a guarantee from Gary Stern quite yet. <laughs> he better do it. <laughs> it's playoffs. Gary Stern, you're a coward if you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> the BC, what can you lose? The BC Lions home to the Calgary Stampeders. Another game, and this might be the main event of the weekend. Uh, the Lions 2-1 and one against the Stampeders this season. Divisional records are solid for both teams. Uh, the Stamps... Seven and five, the Lions eight and four. The the Lions have been six and three at home this season, but the Stamps with a solid road record, seven and two on the road. The thing is, those divisional losses, five of them came against two teams, the BC Lions and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Now, the big question is, is and we got two young quarterbacks. Going here for their first playoff starts. Jake Mayer against Nathan Rourke. How much healthier and confident is Nathan Rourke going into this game? Now, last week, it didn't mean anything. It was really just testing the foot, getting some of that timing down with the receivers again. That has to be the question. Is Nathan Rourke good to go for Sunday? He has to be if they're going to play him. Like you Will have it be to, vintage Nathan Rourke, I should say? <laughs> vintage June 2022 <laughs> Nathan Rourke. That was a, that was a good year. A good year. <laughs> um, Great month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, you you would have to think. Like, I don't think Cat, like, I don't think they're going to put him out there if he would hurt the team, right? Like, it's playoffs. You have Vernon Adams. Who probably has still the playoff still games. best chance to win, yeah. Yeah, so, like, and again, he's also, they may have packages for Vernon to come in and do a change of pace as well because he's another player that can do that. Um, yeah, I, I hope that Rourke is ready to go and as close to 100% as he can be because he's just so damn exciting to watch. And so is Mayer, to be honest. Like, he's a gunslinger now, too. So, this game should have all the fireworks that we want as fans. Will we get it is the question. Yeah. The thing is that Calgary defensive line. They <laughs> Calgary has the best defense in the league. They have the best O-line in the league. It's hard. Like, my heart wants BC to win this game just because I want Rourke to keep his Cinderella season going, but Calgary's Calgary's probably the best chance to take out Winnipeg too. Like it's <laughs> gonna be a great game. This is gonna this, like this. This is gonna make up for the crappiness of last week with no games mattering and three games that are on Saturday. We're gonna get two awesome playoff games on Sunday. And all the respect to the East Division, all the respect to the Toronto Argonauts, but the three best teams in the CFL are in the West, and they're going to be playing over these next couple of weeks. It's unfortunate that one of them doesn't get to play in the Grey Cup against each other, although <laughs> I'm, I'm not writing off the, that Argo team. I... I Especially the defense, they're going to be they're going to be tough to beat and tough to get by. Uh, this is the first home playoff game the Lions have had since 2016. They actually haven't won a playoff game since 2011, when they won the Grey Cup. The the Stamps, on the other hand, they haven't won a playoff game since 2018 either, when they last won the Grey Cup. But it's what they're doing surrounding the game, turning it into a massive event in Vancouver. Sarah McLaughlin singing the national anthem, Stephen Page playing halftime, and now I think they just announced it today. They've set up buses to come in from the BC interior to come to the game. You can buy a ticket, you get the bus ticket, you can get there from 
Kamloops, Merritt, Hope, Chilliwack, Abbotsford, Langley, and all get down to BC Place for the game against Calgary this Sunday. The BC Place is going to be rocking, but if there's a team that can handle that, it probably is Calgary, and it probably is Jake Mayer. The, the guy's got confidence. It doesn't look like he gets shaken all that often. And, hey, we gave props yeah. – or we talked about the worst turnover ratio in the CFL with the Ticats. The Stamps have the best turnover ratio in the CFL, plus 21 on the season. They have the best rushing attack in the CFL, 2,436 yards. Actually, the two top backs in the league, yardage-wise, are facing off in this one. You could probably make an argument that the two best backs of the league are a Calgary Stampede. <laughs> now, rosters are they're pretty small. Will the Stamps get three of their best running backs into the game on Sunday? Dickinson has said it's a possibility. They'd need to take another American off the roster somewhere else, but we could see Kadeem Carey, Peyton Logan, and Diedrich Mills. And if Rourke is going to be playing like he was early in the season, I think the running game is going to be so important for Calgary just to keep them off the field as long as they can uh, because the best – Defense to Nathan Rourke is keeping your offense on the field. Oh, for sure. And that's the one thing that – the one spot on Calgary's defense that they might be, like, a little susceptible because they were seventh in – oh, wait. Yeah, seventh in passing yards against. So They were. Um, <laughs> probably a lot of that is, too, with when they played BC early in the <laughs> season against, <laughs> against Rourke. But, um, no, like, if if he's on his game, if he if they can get the – uh, the play action working and get those those defensive linemen and the, the linebackers to bite on the running game and then go over top like it could be a, it could be a long night for the defense um, but yeah like you said they got to keep work off the field that's defense wins championships and Calgary has that defense that is built to win a championship right now so it's time to see if they can do it it's going to be tough for them to get James Butler going for BC as the stamps have the second. Best rushing defense in the CFL, highlighted with uh, Cam Judge, Jameer Thurman, and that defensive line. And we know that Sean Lemon, the most outstanding defensive player nominee for the Western Division, is going to have his ears pinned back. And we saw Winnipeg hit Rourke last week, and it was a game that meant nothing. So the Stamps, th that's going to be the goal. Is Rourke oh. going to be ready to handle that pressure in front of that massive home crowd at BC Place? I I can't put anything past him. I I can't doubt him. Uh, from no. <laughs> just, I, I know I sound like a fanboy and I'm swooning and I, I kind of am, but <laughs> yeah. we were saying it after the first like three weeks. It's like. Okay, but can he keep doing this? And then it like just I know. kept going and going and going. We're like, "Eff it, we're in." <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's which young quarterback's going to handle the playoff pressure the most? Yep. Work or Mayor? And they both seem like they have ice in their veins. So yep. <laughs> we're going to have a fun little game here. The, the Stamps actually lead the CFL in points for. They're second in the CFL in points against. The Lions are third in both categories there. The Stamps have the least two and outs in the CFL. Uh, they're third in time of possession. This is going to be a great game, and we could be seeing two big-name receivers for each respective team returning to the lineup on Sunday. Malik Henry has missed the past uh, few games with an ankle injury. I think he's emerged as the top deep threat in the Calgary offense. But practicing in full for the BC Lions is Brian Burnham. Now, Lucky Whitehead hasn't practiced this week. We'll see. He hasn't been ruled out for Sunday. 
We'll see if he's going to be good to go. But Brian Burnham back into the lineup for the Lions, that is a massive addition to that offense. Because now you can't just double rhymes. Like, you have to decide who you're going to double on any given play. And one of them is going to be in single coverage, and one of them might have a <laughs> Well, and man, you – you want to talk about somebody that wants a win, wants success. Brian Burnham doesn't have a playoff win. It was like if my stats are correct, he, he came into the league in 2014. So there mm-hmm. hasn't been playoff success in Vancouver for a while. Burnham hasn't been a part of that. And he had some massive seasons in there as well in 2019. I know it was Michael Riley and the amount of sacks that the Lions were giving up. He had almost 1,500 yards that year. Oh, I know. 965 last year in 14 games and 596 in nine games played this season. He's a leader on that offense, and uh, to see him back into the lineup for that team would be would be absolutely massive. I am so looking forward to this Western semifinal. I, I cannot wait for a date with the couch on Sunday for these two games. I mean, if I if I look at the injury reports for for both games, I mean, of course, um, Lucky Whitehead not practicing is a concern for them. Uh, Joel Figueroa, the left tackle, limited in practice as of Thursday. They'll obviously need him going. Um, and if you look at the Calgary Stampeders uh, practice report, uh, offensive lineman Joshua Coker not on there. Parnell Motley, a defensive back not on there. Trey Roberson not practicing right now. So, I mean, there will be some players to watch. Folaren Orimalade limited as of Thursday. If he's not on the field on Sunday, that would be uh, not ideal for the Stampeders. But if, if I look at Montreal's practice report going back to the East Semi, Greg Reed, the DB, Reggie White Jr., uh, the receiver, offensive lineman Sean Jamison, linebacker Micah Awe, not practicing. They're Pretty banged up going into this one. On the other hand, really the only big question mark for uh, the Tie Cats is is Dane Evans. But for the most part, it does look like we're going to be seeing both teams with their best uh, going against each other. And it's going to be, I think, a great Sunday of football. What I always like to do, do you remember the This Is Our League video they did with the Tragically Hip? Yeah. Oh, that's my favorite favorite like hype video of all time and there's also a playoff version so every yeah. playoffs <laughs> that's what i uh, i get chills yeah. like i i te- like uh i just thinking about that now i love it i love yeah. that's like my favorite hip song so oh yeah it just works perfect i love that song this is our league that's that's what it's all about and i think yeah the cfl needs to get back to that and making us feel that way yeah. uh, again because those were <laughs> some yeah. awesome awesome moments and i'm i'm all for trying to get hip and trying to get the younger people but did you see that those sweaters that they released they were black and white i don't think i did uh, oh man they are terrible <laughs> uh, i saw them on twitter and like it's not it like <laughs> There's certain ways you can attack and try to get these these young viewers, but oof, that was a that was a marketing thing. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look these up now. <laughs> yeah, like look at them because they are they are terrible. With Pod Power, our sponsors are making it possible for us to amplify the voices of Albertans and Alberta podcasters. This episode, the Edmonton Community Foundation is helping us give a Pod Power shout out 
to Overdue Finds, an Edmonton Public Library podcast. Bryce Crittenden and Carolyn Land host conversations about books, movies, music, pop culture, and other interesting news about Edmonton. It's a great way to learn more about what's happening at EPL and about how you can use your library card to access all of EPL's in-person and online services. To listen and find out more about Overdue Finds, head to epl.ca slash podcast. All right, Sheldon, the Alouettes are three-point favorites. Sunday, the East semifinal, who you picking? I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> I want Hamilton to win, uh, but... Yeah, we could see Argos Ticats for the fifth time this year. Yeah, um, I, I think Hamilton will win, um, but I... I I'm not a better anyway, but I wouldn't be betting money on this game just because I think it's too close to call. I don't know if I'd bet money on either game. But, yeah, uh, no, but I don't have. A I, think I think Hamilton. I think Hamilton. I'm picking Montreal. I don't trust the Ty Cats offense, but I don't think either team's getting by Toronto anyway. Lock that one in. Yeah, yeah, I I, I agree. I the the thing that the only thing that's making me hesitant on Montreal is I just don't know if what Trevor Harris is going to show up like if. If he's going to be able to, you know, score in the green zone instead of just settling for field goals, that's that's kind of where my head is at. BC Lions two and a half point favorites over the Calgary Stampeders. Who are you picking? <sighs> Jeez, you <laughs> first. You go first with that, man. I think at the beginning of the season, I said Calgary was going to beat Toronto for the Grey Cup. I think I'm going to pick Calgary. Yeah. But, it, oh, man. <laughs> now, let me say, I don't want it to sound super biased. I think it would be so good for the league, good for Vancouver, good for the CFL if the Lions win this. Yeah. Again, I don't know. I, I don't know if Calgary or anybody's really going to beat Winnipeg in that West final either. We might be on our way to a three-peat, although anything can can happen, of course. And the Bombers, their defense especially, I, I don't see them as dominant as they have been in the past two seasons. So they're definitely beatable. And the Stampeders have that running game built for Prairie football. Now, this is indoors. It's a totally different game. <laughs> BC Place can get loud. Mm-hmm. I... I've, I think Stampeders. Now, with the Lions hosting the 2024 Grey Cup, they need to keep they do what they can. Pay Rourke half your salary cap to keep him in Vancouver for at least through 2024. That didn't really work with Mike Riley, though. No, it didn't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, for me, this game is a heart versus head. In my heart, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping BC wins. I, it would be great for the league. But in my head, I think it's going to be Calgary. And this is like a Ryder fan's like worst case scenario. <laughs> You're deciding between Calgary and Winnipeg is who you want to play for the Grey Cup in Mosaic Stadium. <laughs> but I, I think Calgary is going to win. I, I have Calgary in my pick but I... I'm hoping for BC, but I think it's Calgary. Man, Calgary would be so unfamiliar with having a great home dressing room if they were to make it to the Grey. Although the, well, it depends. If the Argos, I don't want to write off Montreal or Hamilton. Would the Argos be home if it's? Well, isn't it, it wherever it is? Is it in the West? I I honestly don't know. I, I can't it, remember. Well, because everyone sure. kept. Sure. Everyone kept saying if the riders were crossing over that they'd have to be in the visitor dressing room and how funny that would okay. be. So I think I think the Western team gets the home dressing room, but I can't say. Cool. We'll see how that goes. I want to end the uh, show uh, giving a shout out to the Jake Botel. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm screwing up the last name, man. Uh, sports experience on Twitter. He's... Uh, a CFL fan from Australia listens to two and out. And look, we think 
And a lot of people in Canada, they complain about, oh, we don't know when the games are. It's hard to be a fan or whatever it is. Imagine being from Australia and uh, following the CFL, listens to two and out. Uh, I think that is so, so cool. And, hey, we need more kickers than ever. So bring that uh, Aussie rules experience <laughs> to Canada. And he is a Thai Cats fan. So, Jake, all the best on Sunday against the Montreal Alouettes. We'll see how they do. And, Sheldon, thanks to you, man. I think this probably going to be your last episode of the year. Um, it's been a trying season uh, for <laughs> – for us trying to make things happen, I'm so last minute. I throw you under the bus. I add things to the prep sheet at the last minute. <laughs> hey, I've been just learning and it's happy to be the honorary use. I'm here whenever you Thanks, brother. Thanks for coming on the show all season long. I'll see you at the Grey Cup in yeah, Regina. Will. Uh, I can't wait for that, but thanks for coming on and helping me or letting me bounce my uh, terrible analysis or whatever we want to call it off of you uh, throughout the season. And uh, Brazilian Thai will be back next week as we wrap up these two semifinal games and then get ready for the division finals and then the Grey Cup. Uh, this time of year is always a little bittersweet. <laughs> it's like... Damn, the, the podcast has become such a part of my routine and life during the season, and then the off season comes around, and I'm just Pablo Escobar and Narcos sitting on the empty swing. That little meme that uh, that you see on Twitter all the time. So you can rate, review, and subscribe to Do It Out on your favorite podcatcher. Uh, you can like, uh, comment, ring the bell on YouTube as well. Thanks, Sheldon. I'm Travis Cura. Brazilian ties back on Monday. We'll talk to you then. Enjoy the CFL playoffs this weekend. You better still have a mustache. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Find more great shows like this at CF Pod Network on Twitter.